One of the things I think that scares people the most when they first get involved in any type of selling is how to handle objections. I know years and years ago when I first started selling, I started selling cookware in China and crystal door to door and a set of cookware is in the neighborhood of $2,000, which was a pretty expensive neighborhood back in 1982. And it's obviously still an expensive neighborhood. So the bottom line is I got hit with a lot of objections and I didn't know how to deal with it. I was afraid of them. Every time a customer would bring up an objection, it would depress me. In other words, I would go through my product presentation, some of you can relate to this and I would do such a great presentation and I would do the best clothes I possibly could and it was as if I felt as if they really needed to just say yes you know what I mean and I, what along the way I started to realize that every once in a while you get a perfect presentation and a perfect close and someone just you know rolls over and says yes but that's maybe 15 to 20 percent of the time at best most of the time the customer is going to give you an objection so what i decided to do was start looking at objections differently i love analogies so one of the analogies i love to give you is imagine you're training to be a boxer and you're there hitting the bag, hitting the bag and doing your timing bag and, you know, doing shadow boxing and jumping rope and timing and working out and doing everything you could do, doing your road work to be a great boxer. Then when you get into your first fight and you get into that first round of your first fight and you have your strategy on how you're going to do your punching and all of a sudden your opponent slams you in the jaw with a left hook. Could you imagine going, what's this? Now you're going to throw punches too? I mean, I know that sounds crazy because we all know in boxing matches that both guys are trying to knock each other out. But so many sales reps, they remind me of that boxer that's upset that the other guy is throwing punches. That's what makes the fight fun and enjoyable and competitive is anyone could sit there and hit a bag because the bag doesn't hit back. You can practice your trial closes all you want. You can go ahead and do your role playing all you want. But when you get a real live customer, they're going to have objections. See, here's the deal. They have money and we have a product or service or business opportunity we want them to go ahead and get. Now, if they're going to exchange their money for our product, service, or business opportunity, it's really simple. Think of scales. Think of apothecary scales. And if the value, if the value of what we're selling is like this and the money we're asking for is like this, they're going to buy every time. If the value is about here and the money we're asking for is about here, could go either way. If in their mind, the value we're asking for is here and the money we're asking for it is here, they're never going to buy. So first thing a great salesperson needs to understand is price is never an objection. Price is never a reason to miss a sale. See, if your price is here, all you have to do is raise the value. So many people, when they get to the end of a presentation, someone goes, well, you know, I like your product, but I think it's a little too expensive. Their brain says, how can I make my price lower? You don't want to make your price lower. You want to build more value. You want to talk more about your product, service, or business opportunity because when a customer perceives that they are getting a deal, doesn't everyone want a deal? Wealthy people love deals. Poor people love deals. Short people, tall people, old people, young people. Everyone would like a deal. So if someone's going, wow, I can start my own business in your network marketing company for only $300. That's all it cost, and I own my own business? Wow, that's incredible. The value is so high. See, whether it was 300, 500, 1,000, 5,000, 20,000, how are people buying Arby's franchises for over $2 million? I mean, Arby's is good, but how many of those sandwiches do you have to sell to get back $2 million? But obviously, they have some great sales reps repping their franchises because people are going, wow, look at all that money. But obviously, they think the value is even higher up or they wouldn't be paying for it. So, price is never an objection. Get that out. Now, here's a big deal. Do you think your product or your service or your business opportunity is overpriced? Because whatever you think is going to determine everything, whatever you perceive. See, when I was selling cookware years and years and years ago, I didn't own a set. I was a 21-year-old guy. What I need with a set of pots and pans? And a veteran came along and said, Mark, you need to buy the cookware. And I'm like, what are you, crazy? I live by myself. I'm not going to buy the cookware. And he's like, Mark, you need to buy the cookware. If you won't spend your hard-earned money on it and someone sits there and goes, yeah, you know, I want to buy it, but, you know, to be honest with you, I can't afford it, you're gone. 
Yeah, me neither. Now, you won't say that, but in your own head, you're going, yeah, me neither. You've got to own it. On the other end, the more you have to struggle and sacrifice to buy it and the more value you get out of it, the more adamant you're going to be about not buying someone's objective because you're going to know that they're wrong because you've experienced it. And for about a month, I was like, that guy's crazy, that guy's crazy. Finally, I went ahead and bought the product. By the way, this guy was the number one sales rep in the entire company worldwide probably knew what he was talking about. I got the products and I'm sure you're not gonna be shocked to find out within several months, my sales tripled because I believed and at that moment of truth, at the end of a number of my presentations, I did not buy the excuse anymore. They didn't have the money because I found the money to buy my product. So are you using your product? Are you on an auto shipment or an auto debit for whatever product your company is selling? Because if you're not, you should be. Have you gotten the largest package available? Because if you're not, you should have. Are you going to all the trainings and paying the price. Whatever you're trying to move other people to do, you should be doing yourself. Enthusiasm is important, right? We talked about how critical enthusiasm, the last four letters of enthusiasm are IASM. I am sold myself. So now let's posture ourselves at the end of a presentation. We go into the end of the presentation and now we're ready to go. So many people at the end of a presentation are going, oh no, now I've got to ask for the money. I remember listening to a Zig Ziglar seminar years ago and he said they had done surveys and found out that 50% of the sales reps that they polled when they did their presentations never even asked for an order. They never closed the sale. How could you go through a presentation, do everything you need to do, all the preparation, everything, do all the flip charts and graphs and everything to prepare and then never ask for the order at the end. That's mind boggling to oh, the, those of us who love to sell, but that's what a lot of people did. 50% of the professional sales rep. Most people in your organization are not professional sales rep. They're doing this part time. Some of them are almost doing this as a hobby. So it's really important we get to understand, we got to get them in the right mindset that we do, we rush through the present. We do all that stuff because we have to, we do it professionally, but man, we get out of the way so we can get to the good part. How many people, kids, will eat their vegetables so they can get to the good part, which is the dessert? The dessert in this business is closing the sale and getting ready for the objections. Understand, an objection does not mean no. An objection means give me more information. When they say I can't afford it, well, how do I know this business really works? How do I know the company's going to be around? Is this one of those pyramid deals? Whatever their objection might be, what they're really saying is I like it, but raise the value some more. I like it, give me another reason to buy this product. Give me another reason to get involved in this business. How many of these people are gonna have to go home, think about this for a minute, and they're gonna have to justify what they just purchased. Whether it was your product, whether it was your service, whether it was getting involved in the business and starting off with a pack of your inventory or whatever the product might be. Bottom line is a lot of them are going home going, man, my spouse is gonna really wanna know why I did this, or my mother, or my brother, or my cousin, or my uncle, or my buddy, or whoever. So a lot of times when they're giving you an objection, they're actually saying, hey, I wanna do this, but you need to give me more reasons. Or it's a little murky for me, it's a little cloudy, I can't can't see. Remember the show, or I guess it's still on, the, the Wheel of Fortune deal where they turn over pieces of the puzzle? They're going, hey, I need to buy a vowel or two. I can't see what this is yet. I can kind of see it, but you need to flip everything else over so I can really see it. That's the way you have to look at an objection. You have to go, oh, good, I did a good presentation. They didn't say no. They're saying, give me more information. Thank God, because I'm a professional and I've got more information. I've got more enthusiasm. I've got more everything. So when they give you an objection, don't get upset about it. Look like the boxing match. It's not like they just bashed you right on the jaw and almost knocked you out. How fun would it be if you were in a boxing match and when you hit your opponent square on the jaw, they just shook it off and kind of smiled at you. What would that make you feel like if you were their opponent? Think about that. You hit him with everything you've got and they smile back at you. Would that make you feel, wow, I'm going to win this fight or would that scare you to death? So when your opponent slams you with their biggest objection and you just sort of slough it off and smile back at them, if you will, now most of them are going to go, wow, I guess I'm going to buy this product. Because remember something, you're either buying or you're selling. 
You're either selling your product, service, or business opportunity, or you're buying their excuse or reason not to do this. And I learned a long time ago, I believe in whatever product I'd rep, I believe in whatever service I'd rep, and I believe in whatever business opportunity I'd rep. I believe network marketing is the last vestige of free enterprise left on this planet. So I know when this person gets started, if they do get involved, it's probably the best decision they could ever make. It can give them generational wealth. It can change the direction of their family tree. So when they're sitting there telling me they can't afford $150 or $300 or $500 or whatever it might take to get involved the right way, the bottom line is I feel good about saying, no, 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 let me share with you a different way of looking at this. Let me raise the value. Let me give you another thing this business is going to do for you. Let me give you another thing this training is going to do for you. Let me give you another value because that's what it's all about. An objection is not a no. It just means not now. It means give me more information. It means raise the value. It means give me more enthusiasm. That's what an objection is all about. And remember this, some will, some won't, so what? If you have a some will, some won't, so what attitude, then whatever objection doesn't matter because if I make a sale right now or not, doesn't matter because I'm just going to keep going and showing. I'm just going to keep going and showing. I'm in show business. A lot of people always want to be in show business. Well, you're in show business now. Just keep going and showing and going and showing and going and showing and going and showing. And sooner or later, someone's going to say yes. I mean, the odds are you may not be a very good baseball player. And if you went up against Roger Clemens, my God, the idea of you being able to hit his fastball is a scary thought. But if you went up there time after time after time after time after time, even if you close your eyes and swing the bat, eventually you would hit the ball a couple of times. Same thing in our business, but obviously the odds are a lot better of selling your product or service than they are of hitting Roger Clemens fastball. That's a much easier thing for us to do is get someone enrolled in our program or sell them our product or service. So your mindset, your posture, you've got the deal. You know what's going on. Pay attention, get excited, never quit, meaning never quit, meaning if I don't make this sale or I don't sign this person up, it doesn't matter. I'm going to keep going. That's the mindset you've got to have. So now when the objection comes along, you're not going, oh no, an objection. You're just going, no big deal. I love this. This is fun. I'm in a game. I'm in a match. When you're in a sporting event, and I use a lot of sporting analogies, hopefully you don't mind that, and you watch like epic battles. I watched the other day a replay of the match in 1980 or 82 between John McEnroe and Bjorn Borg and the finals Wimbledon, a five set, uh, the Wimbledon final, a five set battle, one of the most classic tennis matches ever. And as that set, they're watching them wailing away at each other and wailing away at each other, man. At the end, when Bork finally won and he slumped down to his knees, you could just see the elation on his face. Now, if he'd have gone out and won in three sets, 6-0, 6-0, 6-0, he wouldn't have slumped to his knees gone, oh my God, this is the greatest thing that ever happened. He would have gone, Hey, it's good to win. When you have a worthy opponent and you've got to dig down inside yourself more than you've ever thought you could do and you win, that's what life's all about, guys. And that's the way you've got to view closing. The more stringent, the more determined your pr uh, prospective customer or distributor is not to buy, the more you've got to be into it. Either you're buying or you're selling. I'm here to sell. I represent the best of the best. I know what this product, service, or business will do for you. So I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be polite. I'm going to be sweet, but I'm going to be cool about this. Now, whenever you're answering an objection, another little thing. Remember, you agree before you disagree. Whenever you argue with a prospective customer or distributor, you lose. Never argue. So whenever someone says, you know, I think your product's too expensive, you go, you know, I could understand where you're coming from, but let me share it with you this way, okay? And then you raise the value. You know, I, I think your product's, you know, nice, but I don't know if I use, I, I really need it. You know what? I could see what you're saying, but let's look at it this way. Never just go, oh, that's ridiculous. That may be what you're thinking in your mind, but remember you have to have is what the doctors call some good bed side manner. You have to have good personality skills. Once again, I cannot urge upon you enough. Take the personality test. Watch the personality videos. That stuff is critical. Customizing the way you're dealing with someone to their personality type overrides a lot of the stuff even I'm sharing with you right now. But the bottom line is answer an objection with confidence. Agree and then disagree. And then last but not least, when handling an objection, when you're done handling the objection, remember, reclose them. Go back and ask a closing question again. So I think your product's too expensive. You know, I understand where you're coming from. I've heard that before, but if you think about this, 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 and this, and all the money you'll save with that, 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 and that, then obviously understand that when you really think about it, the product's really incredibly underpriced, isn't it? So why don't we go ahead and get you that product? Do you want to get one of them or do you want to get two?
You always answer the objection and then reclose. And once again, I love to chose with alternate or close with alternate of choice closes. There's a lot of different ways to close. You can do it a lot of different ways. You can close by saying, so why don't you just go ahead and give my product a try? That's a great close. There's a lot of different ways to facilitate action, but that's a different video. Right now, we're overcoming objections. Objections are good. They mean that they're still interested. There's nothing to be afraid of with objections. You want to have fun with objections. There's a million different specific ways to handle it. Once again, if you get involved with some of the other videos we have, we'll give you in our live seminars in our vault, there's some footage of me showing different ways to specifically handle objections. You can get to that as well. But for right now, if all you do is watch this video over and over and over and over again, you'll be in really good shape. Final thought, never let them see you sweat. We've got the deal. Some will, some won't, so what? Understand that you could live without this customer, you could live without distributor. If they perceive that you need them, they're out of here. When they perceive that they need you and you don't need them, that's when everyone wants to sign up in your business and that's when you can overcome the most abominable of objections.